hey guys welcome back to my channel and i just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers and i'm doing a giveaway um because i reached 4,000 subscribers and i just wanted to know if you would like me to do a giveaway on yarn um a crochet piece by me or a gift card so just let me know in the upper right hand corner what you would like to see um in the giveaway all right and so now here are the crochet bell bottoms that i created um i've been wanting to make these for a long time but I just never knew what yarn I wanted to use or what stitch I wanted to use, but I just went ahead and went for it. So here are the things you're gonna need. I used three skeins of Red Heart. Um, it was like a fleck color, and then I used a five millimeter hook. I would recommend using a bigger hook. Um, I also used scissors to cut um, all of the yarn ends. Then I used a measuring tape to measure my um, waist and my hips. You're also going to need elastic if you make your pants how I did. Mine were super heavy. Then a tapestry needle to um, sew up some of your outfit. Then I also use a zipper off of my boyfriend's pants, but you can order one or buy one from the store. And then you're going to need some um, like little pins to pin together everything. So first thing, I started off with a swatch gauge with the two stitches that I was going to use which was half double crochet and double crochet. So right here is where I'm measuring my stitch gauge. Um, <clears throat> I use the same hook, so it's pretty much the same for both, um, except the height is different. So yeah, I'm getting three stitches per one inch for um, my half double crochet. And that is what I'm gonna start the top of my pants off of because I feel like it's a little bit more of a closed stitch than the double crochet. And please excuse my voice because it is super early when I'm doing this voiceover. Anyway, so now I'm gonna get into um, writing down my stitch gauge. So three stitches for me equals one inch. And then the rows. Um, just about two rows equals one inch for me so i'm just gonna go ahead and go with that and i always kind of check um to see if i'm gonna have the same amount for each other inch but it's all the same and i use these stitches and the same yarn and hook all the time so i kind of know the stitch gauge already so yeah um now I'm just going to show you basically how I'm going to get the whole measurement for the top of the pants. So my waist is 26 inches and my hips are about um, 33 inches. And so um, based upon that and my stitch gauge, I can basically find out how I need to do my pants and I'm doing it so you can add a zipper or you can lace it up or whatever you want so you're not going to have a waistband completely around it's going to be open down the middle so basically I'm going to do 26 times 3 which is the stitch gauge and that tells me that I need to um have 78 chains to start off with and then I'm going to do the same thing for my hips, 33 times 3, which is going to tell me the number that I need to get um, at the bottom of my hips. Like where my hips start, that's the number. So however many chains, which for me was 21, that's how many chains I needed to increase from my waist to my hips. So um, that's just how I do it you can use whatever method you want I divided that by three which is my stitch gauge and um, it's basically telling me that I have seven increases and if you do the math you can tell why I have seven increases yours will be different anyway so um, basically this is really hard for me to explain to you guys. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, basically, you're just going to do however many increases it tells you to do. And you want to make sure you 
find some type of even number or whatever number you need. Um, so yeah, and 33 minus 26, which is my hips minus my waist, will give you your hip to waist ratio. And I'm just basically gonna, you know, say that that is however many inches it takes to get from your waist to your hips or your hips to your waist. And since two rows for me equals one inch, I'm gonna times that number by two. So I know how many rows that I need to do. And there is a magic formula that you can use um, to get this measurement. I just use whatever method is easier for me at the moment when I'm sitting down. And so basically when I multiply that number um, by seven, I get 14 rows. So I'm gonna do 14 rows with a three stitch increase. And I, but I chose to do it every other row that I increased. I didn't increase every row because I wanted it to be long enough to get from my waist to my hips. So, and I didn't have to do that at all, but I did. So just choose how you choose, you wanna do it. So I'm basically showing you how the pants are gonna look at the top. You're gonna have your waist measurement at the top and you're gonna get down to your um, hips. That is gonna be open in the middle cause that's where you're gonna add your zipper at. And I'm showing you that we're gonna be going back and forth. Like it's not connected in a round. It's just literally rows back and forth. And you're just increasing as you go down. However many you need to increase to get from your waist to your hips, that's how many you do. And it should be a sure fit for you because it was for me. I hope you guys understood that. <laughs> I really hope you did. Anyway, so we're gonna move on and I'm going to chain my 78 that I figured out that I needed in the beginning. And this video is gonna kinda be like little clips of this and that because my video was like well over an hour and I had to cut it down because like nobody's gonna watch that long video. <laughs> and most people already know how to do the basic stitches and create pants. So I know nobody's gonna watch that long video. Anyway, so after I have created my foundation chain of 78 chains, I am going to um, chain one just for the little turning chain. And I'm going to <clears throat> single crochet down this first um down this first row and then i'm gonna start my increases because i just want it like a little foundation row first and you don't have to do this you can um go straight into um your your increases the first row if you want I do not know why I showed all of this. <laughs> okay, so now that I have completed that first um, row, I'm going to chain two um, for every row because that's what I do for half double crochets. You can chain one if you want. So I'm basically going to add my three stitch increase in this row and I'm going to try to space it out, being the fact that I have 78 chains right now, I'm gonna try to space it out in between like every um, other stitch, like not every other stitch, like every 20 to 25 stitches or whatever, I was doing an increase. And I didn't, inc I didn't chain in the first chain because I thought I was gonna be lacing these pants up instead of adding a zipper to it. So I was gonna use those spaces as the space to put my lace in. So if you're making this, you can um, do a stitch in every chain across. 
so I'm messing up and some more stuff as usual <laughs> but anyway I'm going to be showing you where I add the increases so this is me trying to count to figure out if I have enough however I felt was enough however many I felt was enough to um start adding my increase in I wanted it to kind of be spaced out So basically, from here on out, until I complete my 14 rows, this is what I'm going to be doing. Just, there's an increase right there. You just add a, a stitch, like two stitches in, in one chain. And I actually increased one row, and then I didn't add an increase for the next row, and then I increased after that. So it was like an increase, no increase, increase, no increase for 14 rows. For me, it just made sense for me to do it that way. But when you make your pants, your stitch gauge is going to be different. Your stitch pattern might be different. I don't know. So whatever is easier for you to obtain, um the amount of rows that you need and for it to fit you perfectly. So like I said, I'm just gonna keep going. And I only kept this clip in because I knew I wasn't gonna show the rest of the rows because I left that in in the original footage at first, but it was just too much for me and I don't like repetitive things and I feel like if I tell you that that's what I did, then you should just know that that's what I did and I don't have to show you. And I am going to be linking videos in the description box um, to show you where I got the method to add the zipper from and all that jazz. So, yep, just going down. Adding all my little three increases. And if you guys know how to do the magic formula, like, you know exactly how to make these pants. Like, it's super duper easy. So, I know the Sun Clan gang is definitely about to be lit if y'all haven't already tried this method. Because y'all be popping in that group. <laughs> I be looking at stuff and I be like, yo, why are they watching my videos? Like <laughs> they crochet way better than me. But anyway, shout out to the Sun Clan. I love them, y'all. I be in that group rolling dog. Like <laughs> they are super duper hilarious in there. Alrighty. This is taking forever. And I have been working on these pants for like a few days. Like if you've been following my Instagram stories, you know the struggle. I was trying to figure out what video to continue making because I have so many unfinished videos. It don't make no sense. I'm so indecisive, y'all. Yeah, so basically I'm about to just fast forward through <laughs> all of this. This is the first row of increases. I did three increases like I told you I was going to do. I'm going to go back along and try to find these increases. One. Two. And. Three. So now when I come back in the next clip, I'm going to have all of my rows completed with all of my increases. So I have 78 at the top and at the bottom I have 99. You want to make sure you count this correctly so you know that you have the right amount of stitches and that you're not adding or decreasing. So basically I added about four stitches, I mean four rows at the bottom because I felt like I needed extra coverage, which I really didn't. And I feel like that's why my pants were a little loose. But anyway, measure it to your body and make sure you have your um, seven inches. And as long as it's seven inches, you're good. So we're going to join the two front pieces together with a slip stitch. And I did it really weird. I don't know why. But slip stitch as you would normally slip stitch them together. And then on this part, 
I chained like six chains, but really I only needed about three, if that, because I forgot that since we increased to the waist, I mean to the hips, you didn't really need that big of a increase for the um for the crotch area. So trust me, do not chain this many chains. Just try it with three and then see how it goes. After you chain your crotch area amount, you want to make sure you connect it to the middle part of the back and you need to count your leg holes so your leg holes aren't two different sizes because trust me, I did it. And five stitches makes a huge difference. So make sure you get it in the middle of the back of the shorts. So use your stitch markers and count. Trust me, because I don't like to count. So basically, I'm just showing you right here. Everybody knows basically how to go around and make a leg hole. So I'm half double crocheting from that spot that I slip stitched last. And I'm half double crocheting around my whole leg hole. All the way around the leg hole. I haven't crocheted across the crotch part. And I had to take this all out. So when I come back with my pants, it's not going to be this same... Um, same pants because I had to take it all out and redo the crotch area because it was super baggy when I um when it basically looked like shorts <laughs> it had looked super baggy and I was like oh no oh no you ain't even got no booty for all that so if you do happen to have um a bigger butt then maybe you will need more crotch space I don't know because I don't have one <laughs> unfortunately so yeah going around and I think I'm going to show where I do the crotch part if you don't know how to just double crochet across the crotch part. But it's super easy because it's just like the rest of the stitches. And you're defining your leg holes at this point. <clears throat> so yeah, you're going to go into every chain that you did for the crotch area. You are going to... Um, just half double crochet right on top of that chain if that makes sense <laughs> you just and i'm struggling because i made the chain super tight for no reason i don't know why and so i'm just going through each one of those chains that i did and then i'm going to go ahead and slip stitch it to the first half double crochet well the chain two that i did I'm going to slip stitch into there after I finish my last one. Here we go, slip stitching it in. And so basically, you should be able to tell where I'm going with this. You want to continue however many rows you want to do for your shorts. I did four rows total, um, as you'll see in a minute. So I completed four rows. So if you wanted to make shorts like this, you could. If you want to make a skirt like this, you could. Like whatever you want to make that you don't want to make a waistband for and all of that jazz, you can do it. So now that you see this side, I'm going to show you how to reconnect um, the yarn to the other side. Cause I don't think I ever do that when I made pants. I don't know if I showed you how to reconnect it, but I just reconnect um, in the same spot that I did the first one, but just on the opposite side. So right here where it's starting from the crotch area, that's where I'm reconnecting um, my yarn and I'm gonna go all the way around doing the same thing I did for the first leg. So the second leg can look like the first one. what am I doing <laughs> I don't know what I was doing anyway so you want to go ahead and oh I look confused like I didn't even know where to start <laughs> okay so I'm starting on the crotch area and you just want to go in 
with your half double crochet on top of every previous stitch that you see. So you don't want to increase or decrease at all. You just want to crochet on top of everyone. And I'm having a hard time seeing where they are for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, don't mind me. Girl, if you don't crochet, I didn't cut that part out and I should have it. Stuff like that irritates me. <laughs> anyway, so I'm crocheting on top of every previous stitch and this is the um, crotch area. And you don't have to start going around this part, but I just crochet however I crochet. It don't always make sense, but just use your techniques and just add a little bit of what I'm saying in there. <laughs> Basically is what I'm telling you to do. So yeah, that's basically self-explanatory for real, for real. But I just want to show it just in case. Some people haven't made pants, but majority of people have. Okay. And just keep on going around until you have four rows like the other side. And bam, you got you some shorts or whatever, the start of your pants, whatever you want this to be. Alrighty, so now my pants, I mean my shorts look even. Well, <laughs> Not really even, but they're both basically defined. Both of the leg holes are defined. So now they're even. I've completed them. These will be some bombtail shorts. But of course, I wanted to make some bell bottoms. So this is the part where I'm not really gonna be showing you too much. I think I'm gonna show the increase um, to start the bell bottoms, but I'm not really showing you the leg part because Either you want your legs to be loose or fitted. It's up to you. I am choosing to do it kind of fitted, but we're gonna have different um, techniques going down because our legs are all different sizes. So basically I'm just gonna be showing you the parts that I completed and telling you what I did. So from this part, I did um, 14 rows of no increase or decrease. It was just 14 rows of however many chains my leg holes were. And I think they were like 40 something. I don't know. Um, I didn't write down the numbers, which I probably should have, but I can go back and count. Anyway, so I did about 14 rows of no increase or decrease. And then I, um, then after that, I started decreasing. So I decreased for about seven rows and that got me down to about my kneecap area, I want to say. And that's where I really wanted to start my, um, I really wanted to start the bell bottom area was at my kneecaps. But the pants were super duper heavy. So my measurements didn't really plan out how I thought they were because it started sagging. Anyway, so um, here's the point where I have finished the decreases I want to say yeah I decreased um, the seven rows um, one stitch each row you can do two stitches each row just depends on what you want to do mine were looser than what I wanted but I'm going to shrink them anyway because I'm trifling like that um, and I could have blocked them and they probably would have been a little bit better but anyway Um, I am at the portion where I'm going to start increasing, which is my kneecap area. And I did about eight rows of increase and I did five stitches. Um, every fifth stitch <laughs> I did an increase. So you can do more or less. It doesn't matter. I chose five and it kind of worked out for me. So, I think I'm going to show you my increases. Here's the first increase. And then I'm going to continue until 
the fifth, the next fifth stitch that I'm counting from, and then I'm gonna increase. You can add more to one stitch. You could put two increases in one stitch, so you can have three stitches in total, but it's up to you how, if you want yours super duper wavy, or if you just want it to flare out. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted mine to look like next time. I think I'll do like more of a wave pattern. But this this was a good experience to show me what I should and shouldn't do. <clears throat> anyway, here's another increase. And basically just increasing every fifth stitch around. And I'm the type of person where I don't like increase upon increase. So I'm doing an increase row and then not an increase row and then an increase row and not an increase row for these eight rows. So they're not going to all be increases. You might want to do that if you want your flare to be really big or if you want it to be super duper ripply or wavy. I didn't really know what I was going for. So I just went with the every fifth stitch. And it worked out, I guess, pretty good. And so this isn't like really a thing that I can tell you like what to do. It's your preference. If you want your bell um, bottoms to look a certain way, you have to do a different technique than what I did. But yeah, it's really hard for me to explain to you guys the things that I do, being that I'm not really a structured crocheter like <laughs> I don't know all the terminology and all the correct ways to do things I just do things how I see fit so yeah I might confuse you sometimes and my bad just ask me and I might try to help you I'll be honest if I don't know <laughs> okay so this is basically what my flare is starting to look like to start at bell bottoms, my pants look super weird because I kept trying them on and stretching them out and doing all types of stuff. I was twerking in them. My boyfriend was laughing like, so these pants look kind of weird because I had them on. But anyway, you basically want to continue your increases until your, the bottom of your pants is as wide as you want and as ripply as you want or whatever the case may be or until it reaches the length that you want. So um, I'm going to basically show you all of my increases so that is my whole increase rows eight of them and then after that I continue for 11 rows but I didn't do any increases or decreases nothing just straight however many stitches I had in the last row I just continue 11 more rows of those I feel like I should have did maybe some increases to keep it a little bit wavy but I didn't but yeah it still turned out fine so basically at the bottom of my pants, I don't know why I did this because you can't really see it, but I added like a little shell pattern and I added it to my waistband too. You don't have to do this. You can do whatever you want on the bottom of it. You could pick a really cute little um, stitch, especially if you do like an open stitch bell bottom. It'll look super duper cute like that. Mm -hmm. So basically... You're just gonna double crochet and you want to do two double crochets chain one and two double crochets skip three chains and do the same thing again it's so easy two double crochets chain one two double crochets or you could change it into a different stitch pattern whatever you want that's just what came to my mind at the time and I just went ahead and did it and I continue that all the way around both bottoms of both pants okay so this is how it looked when I was finished with the bottom of it all the shell stitches going around I'm so sleepy and so hungry, y'all. I should have did this voiceover last night. Oh my gosh. It is September 4th. Hey, Beyonce birthday. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's one of my favorite performers. Don't judge me. <laughs> I am not part of the beehive, though. I swear. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. This is how the pants look. At the bottom. 
Now I am doing the waistband portion. Now I did double crochets to start off with because I knew that my zipper was trifling and that it was gonna show um, on the shell stitches. So I should have only did like three double crochet um, stitches across and then start the shell pattern. But I did like nine for some reason and it looks super weird. So if you try this for your pants, and you want to um, hide the zipper part and you don't want it to show on your design around the top, just do like two or three or however many covers up your zipper part. You'll see what I'm talking about later. But yeah, mine looks super weird because I did it like this. But I'm going to go straight into the, um, the little shell stitch pattern that I did on the back. So I'm going to skip three chains and then I'm going to do the two double crochets, chain one, two double crochet all the way around the whole waistband and when I get back to the um, the other portion of where I'm gonna attach the zipper at I'm gonna do the double crochets the same way I did in the beginning even though it was ugly <laughs> I'm gonna do that again so that's just what you do if you're gonna do this part and it helped me kind of cinch in my waist a little bit because it was kind of like stretchy so basically Here's how your pants should look. They are all completed, except you have to add the zipper and elastic. So I'm stitching up the portion of the pants that I felt like, like it was all the way by my vagina. So it's like I stitched all the way up to where like a zipper would start on your normal pants. Um, and this is high waisted. So if you know how your pants fit for high waisted pants, you just know how much to stitch up. Plus it is the same, um, amount as my, um, my zipper space at the top. I measured it. So I laid it flat on there and then I marked off the space. So I knew how much to sew up at the bottom. So if this confuses you, once you make it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Cause you're, when you try it on, you're going to be like, hold on. I can't have all of my stuff hanging out by the zipper. Like, no. So yeah, go ahead and stitch that together. However you want to stitch it. I'm just doing a quick little stitch. I don't even know what it's called. I always do it. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and stitch that portion up and then you'll be closer to completing your pants. And yep, just keep on going. Y'all, I'm at like a loss for words. I don't even know what to say in these videos. I feel like I need to write it down beforehand and just read it off the paper so I don't mess up. <laughs> That'd be all over the place. All right, so here we go with that part stitched up. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I guess I'm showing you the waistband that I already showed you. <laughs> so here is where we're going to add our, our zipper to. Now, um, I fast forwarded through all this because I kept messing up. And the zipper was so trifling because I took a zipper out of my boyfriend's jeans instead of just buying a zipper. So yeah, it was kind of ripped up because I snatched it out like all hard without seam rippers or anything. So basically, you're going to put some stitches that are basically the same, about the same size as your stitches, your crochet stitches. And you want to count. So I counted about 14 um, stitches on my, the little area where I'm going to attach the, um, the zipper to. So it's about 14 rows and 14 stitches so I'm adding that um, to the zipper you just want to do a little back stitch across so you have something to attach your um, yarn to you're gonna put that through this thread that you're threading through the zipper you're gonna put your crochet hook through there and you're gonna attach it to your pants I'm gonna put a video in the description box of where I got this method from so now um, I'm, this is after I have pinned it down. 
Um, I didn't show this. I cut it out because I messed up and I was poking myself in the finger <laughs> and everything. But I'll link a video on how to put a zipper in also. Um, if you don't know how, I just opened it and I pinned it to where it looked like it measured up to. Now, this was the difficult part for me, y'all. So super difficult because I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I never used this method to attach um, a zipper, but I felt like it was the easiest way for me to show you on camera without you having to have, like, sewing skills or whatever. So, basically, I attached my yarn, and y'all, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just grabbed the first um, stitch that I made on the zipper and I'm just crocheting into that. It is so hard to get into the, the thread loops. So I'm using like a 3.5 millimeter hook to get in between those because it was so hard with all the other hooks. So I'm basically just single crocheting. I'm putting the yarn, I mean the hook through the yarn first whatever stitch I want to use and then put it through that thread stitch connected to the zipper and you're just single crocheting all the way across and um, you want to make sure that everything is secure don't have it loose and raggedy like how mine is because I had to secure my um I had to secure the zipper at the top and I'll show you a clip of it when I'm finished but yeah you just want to go through every single um, space on the project and the zipper you want to go across I mean go through every loop you don't want to just be having gaps and a lot of tension though but you don't want it to be super duper loose either you want it to be all nice and snug so everything fits right It's so hard for me to get into these little thread stitches. Like, oh my goodness, it was so frustrating. But I made it work with a zipper from some like Levi jeans that he doesn't wear anymore. <laughs> and it completely wasn't the color that I needed, but that's what happens when you be lazy and don't wanna go to Walmart or, or Michaels. So anyway, I'm taking out my pins as I go along. Now this, um, the bottom of the zipper part, it messed me up because I was supposed to put a stitch there um, with the thread, but being that the method that I used to get the um, zipper out of my boyfriend's pants, it made me have to cut off some of the pieces because it was fraying, so I didn't get a chance to do that. So I just basically <laughs> attached the bottom of the zipper the best way I could and I can't really explain it. I'm just going to let you watch because I'm confusing my own self. So I found a way to make it, make it work and I still had to secure it um, once I was finished with like a little stitch just to make sure it wouldn't move when I wanted to actually use the zipper. So once you get the bottom portion completed, look at me struggling. <laughs> just the whole struggle bus, y'all. Like, oh my God. This is what happens when you don't do things the way that you knew you should have did it in the first place. I should have got a brand new zipper and I wouldn't have had these problems. Anyway, however I'm looping this through, just know that it was a struggle for me. But I made it work. Bam, don't know what I did, but you see what I did, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so now I'm just going to continue the rest of the um, zipper part just like I did the first um, half of the zipper. Go ahead and throw that thing up on there. 
I also had to add some elastic like I told you and I didn't show that because I didn't even complete putting the whole elastic in I just attached the um the elastic to the top of one stitch row and I didn't even put it on the bottom so <laughs> it's so weird um for me to explain this I don't know why I'm having a loss for words right now like my mind is going so blank anyway but this is the functional zipper I had to um put two little stitches at the top of the um the zipper to keep it to keep it like tight and I didn't want it to be like flimsy when I kept unzipping it and zipping it back up so yeah I think I'm about to show you where I added the elastic I just measured my waist stretched you have to stretch the um, elastic and then I just put a little stitch at the top of the elastic bam and you don't go all the way through your yarn you just go through like a loop of the yarn you don't want it to show on the outside of the pants I just added that so it could be tight on my waist and it ended up um, making it look like I had a little donk or something <laughs> I liked how it ended up coming out so yeah you guys here is the elastic like I showed you and the functional zipper and yeah here is my pants thanks for watching I'm so excited that I finally finished them you guys and if you have any questions just ask me and leave your comments down in the description box and um, also tell me what you want me to make next I have a lot of videos that I haven't cre um, edited yet but anyway Follow um, Little John's Yarn if you haven't, and Chasing Sunbray if you haven't. They have amazing tutorials. And thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.